Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Ebley and I work in public programs at the Met and I want to welcome you to our virtual version of Drop and Drawing. While the Met is closed, we're bringing the museum to you in a series of drawing exercises meant to challenge and grow your creative skills. And in honor of the Met's 150th birthday, this week we'll be learning about perspective by drawing the facade of the building using one point and two point perspective. Now a little background, perspective drawing helps create the illusion of three dimensional space on a two dimensional surface. And for this exercise, I'm just using paper. With the help of perspectival tools, such as a horizon line, vanishing points, and diagonal lines drawn from our vanishing points, we can actually create a pretty convincing drawing of a building in space. The tools I'm using today I found in my house, but if you don't have these exact items, I'm going to tell you about some possible substitutions. I'm using a pencil with an eraser. I'm using also a kneaded eraser or another external eraser because when you're doing perspective, it's always good to have extra eraser, especially if you're using pencil. I'm also using a marker to kind of fill in the final details to kind of solidify the drawing. And once I put in that marker, I can then really erase all of my uh, pencil mar markings. In addition, it's always nice to have a pencil sharpener to keep your pencil sharp. And I would love to have a ruler so I can draw all my straight lines, including my horizon line and my diagonal lines. But for some reason, I can't find one in the house. So I was a little scrappy and I'm using a macaroni noodle box from dinner the other night. It provides a nice long straight edge to help me with creating the straight lines for drawing diagonals, verticals, and horizontals. Now, if you don't have a macaroni box, it's perfectly fine. You can use a leftover piece of mail, a magazine, or even the edge of a book. You just want to make sure that it's okay that you get a little bit of pencil, a little bit of pen on it. And then last but not least, you want paper. Now I'm today using a 9 by 12 uh, sketch pad and if you don't have any sketch paper or drawing paper that's perfectly fine you can do computer paper construction paper newspaper if you have it it doesn't matter what size per se although you probably don't want to work too small um, and you just want to make sure that you have multiple sheets uh, it's important to not expect your best work from your first try especially with perspective drawing so experimentation and learning is really just becomes a part of the fun um, and if you have all your tools, or if you um, are ready, and ready, set, and ready to go, uh, you just want to make sure that you get your station prepared. Uh, get yourself situated at a table or on the floor, um, and you want to make sure you have your tools nearby, in addition to maybe just something to sip on while you're working, because perspective drawing can be um, a little bit long. And then from here, we can go ahead and get started. So the first line I want to make I've created this nice little reference point is my horizon line. Now the horizon line is what divides the ground from the sky in your drawing. And I usually situate my horizon line right roughly in the middle of the page and sometimes maybe a little bit under. I'm using my picture of the museum is this one situated right over here and uh, it actually kind of makes the museum sit almost on top of the horizon line, but I'm still gonna probably put it, the horizon line roughly around the middle. Now my straight edge doesn't actually go all the way across, which is perfectly fine, because I'm just gonna scoot it over when I need to. Although we're doing perspective drawing and they often tend to be very tight drawings, I prefer to just kind of wing it and not allow it myself to be caught up too much and making sure it's perfect and more just making sure that I'm following along and um, doing what feels right and best for me. So I'm just going to draw this horizon line. So there's the first part and then I'm switching this over, the second part. So I've got my nice looking horizon line and now I need to impose my vanishing point. So when I'm thinking about a horizon line, I'm thinking about where the ground meets the sky, and then I also think about a sunset. And for some reason, my vanishing point to me always reminds me of the sun hitting the ground in a sunset. All the rays of light that are coming from the sun are 
equal to all the diagonals that are going to be coming from this vanishing point in your drawing. And also, all of your diagonals will descend and narrow in space to this one vanishing point where it will intersect. Now, if I'm doing one vanishing point right here, I'm going to put it there for this drawing. That makes it one point perspective. I'm going to add another vanishing point too over here. And this is going to become a two point perspective drawing. Now, the less points of perspective, the simpler the drawing. So the more points of perspective you put in, the more complex it gets. You can go all the way up probably to three, but I'm going to stick with just one to two points for now. And first, I'm just going to stick with the one over here. So I'm going to be using this as my reference point to draw my diagonals. But first, I'm going to create a vertical line to describe the edge of the museum in the picture that I'm using. Now, there's a couple edges or strong edges that I could reference. One of them is where the architectural heads lie. And the other one is over here, where the second corner of the museum exists. So I'm just going to draw those in real quick first. There's one. And they're almost about the same height, maybe a little bit shorter. And there's two. And I'm going to use this vanishing point to connect my diagonal from this point to here. And again, my straight edge isn't as long as the length of that I need, but that's okay because I can just switch it over. It's not going to be perfect, and that's per that's perfectly fine. So now I have like a rough understanding of what I'm looking at is going to be the top of the museum. And then I also kind of want to start and may as well start with the bottom of the museum. Now in this picture, the bottom of the museum goes all the way down past the picture plane. So I'm just going to let my line kind of just flow all the way down. So I've got that going right there. And I'm just going to let it fly all the way past and off the picture. And clean up a little of my drawing as I go. But again, totally not necessary. My horizon line's still in there. Eventually it's going to be erased. But I'm just keeping it in there right now as a reference point. So now I've got the top and the bottom of my museum. I kind of want to put a couple more reference points, especially for this side of the facade. We also have our columns, so I'm going to just loosely put in some really uh, nice verticals for the columns. Again, this is not perfect. Also, your vertical lines will always be close or near your horizon line and they may even intersect with your horizon line but they're never meant to connect to your vanishing points. So closer towards us, the columns are fairly big and wide, and then there's a larger space in between them. But as we're going further back in space towards our vanishing point, also coined as a vanishing point because that's where everything goes to vanish, um, your columns are getting smaller and closer together. And again, this is very loose and also not too perfect, and part of me is just kind of winging it and eyeballing it. Now that I have those columns, I'm going to also connect them to the top of their little awnings. And those awnings don't go all the way across. But I'm going to at least put that material in. So I have some columns that are not really connected to anything yet. I have the top of my museum. And then I have this side. I'm also going to just um, kind of cut off where the columns are 
because there's a sharp edge right there where the museum goes back into space on a different level. And I'm gonna just cut it there. I'm gonna erase these marks. All right. So now I'm gonna use my second vanishing point. And this vanishing point is just to create the extra layer of depth. And you can kind of see it in the photo where they're on this corner, it really just like curls back and you can see that diagonal almost in imaginary line tracing back to here. So we're gonna use our straight edge to kind of really solidify that right there. And the same goes for on the other side right here. Now part of it is that the museum is kind of placed together by multiple different buildings, almost like glued together. And that's part of the reason why we have these wonderful kind of descending stairs seeming like from the top to the bottom. And we just wanted to capture that with these straight lines and we did. Now from here, we can go even further into details. Um, we can start adding some shading so we sh see exactly where things exist in space. Um, we can also start adding these archways that are kind of peeking out in addition to the banner, and we may as well associate that in space with our vanishing point. And then we also have all of these architect architectural elements that we can capture. Using our straight edge and our vanishing points. To help inform and again I'm now just riffing but it's all up to you kind of which details you want to go to next. We can also start creating the stairs. All using this vanishing point. We can create shrubs or trees in the corner. We can build out more lines and trellises that define some of these shapes of the facade. And from here we can really just go even farther and then we can start using our pen to scope out some of these details. And this is where I like to use a freehand kind of develop exactly what I want to showcase. In this drawing.
And again, my pencil marks are meant to be the framework. And then as I'm using my pen, I can kind of develop more and further what I'm looking for and move around some of those first marks that I made. To really declare what is important to me in making these drawings. I am also using hash marks to define shading and shadow. You're more than welcome to do that too. You can also do just full on coloring in. you can also use your marker to just go right back over the drawing lines that you did but what's nice about using pencil is I can erase some of those lines and the marker can take over And again, I'm not using my straight edge anymore, and that's only because I want to let my eye take over in terms of what I'm seeing in this picture of the Met, and let that speak and inform my drawing. And if you wanted, you could get into really good detail and do the heads that exist on the top as architectural forms. Or you can just make them interesting little loops, like I'm doing here. And you can play with some of these perspectival tools that we already used. And as they're going back in space, they're getting smaller and closer together. Do another little arch, and that's for our lovely door. And even here, I'm going to bring back my straight edge, and I'm going to form all of those lovely architectural lines here. Again, it is far from accurate or perfect, but what I like about it is I'm starting to let my eye take over in terms of what I'm looking at versus being true to the perspective uh, tools. It's always going to be this bit of an interplay and never not are never just one way to see. So drawing like this will end up becoming eventually a drawing very similar like this. And from here you can go as far as adding even you know more details and technical flair, more trees. Feel free to add people and color. It doesn't just have to be about adding the dimension of space. It can be adding further dimension using color, tone, and uh, depth through uh, lights and darks. Now, 
my one of my favorite parts about using these details and you know creating little niches and archways for your eye to travel to is that you're not only creating places for your hand to investigate but also for the viewer's eye to rest and get lost in it feels equally as nourishing as creating the overall composition and illusion of space in your perspective drawing and you know this again is just a loose framework for you to jump off take care of your own perspective drawing of the museum or of a building nearby and feel free to you know add as much or add as little as you'd like or be as true to the perspective tools or use them as merely a skeleton so that you can create and flourish with any other creative details you enjoy. Now I just want to thank you all for joining us for this very um, fun activity of drawing the Mets facade for its 150th birthday. I hope you enjoyed learning about perspective and I'd love to see you all in two weeks when we do another drop in drawing and uh, thank you all and have a wonderful day.